Welcome to the podcast. We talk about all the things that are hidden in the shadows. This is Isaac, and only Isaac. Uh, this is Shadow Walker Part 4. Um, I know in the last episode we talked about releasing this because a lot of new things have happened with my ability, which still seems to be singular, and I am the only one so far that we've met that has my ability in particular. Now, we've met other EMA users or energy manipulation ability users, but um, seem to be only one Shadow Walker um, as of so far. Uh, a small recap uh, on my ability if you've listened to this episode before listening to the others, uh, stop now and go back and listen to those because a lot of what I'm talking about is not going to make a lot of sense. And why would you watch the uh, a fourth movie without watching the first three and think you can figure out what's going on? You're not going to be able to. Uh, but a uh, small recap for those who need a refresher instead of trying to go back and listen. Shadow Walker ability, as yet to be 100% defined, um, is I can feel the energy of the dead with my hands. Left hand is good spirits. Right hand is bad spirits. And I can also pull energy in to myself, but I only ever, exclusively only ever pull dark energy in. And this ability has allowed me to uh, be a great weapon against uh, paranormal entities that we face while investigating. Um, anything from a dark entity to uh, dark elemental to demons. And funny enough, I'm going to get to one of my newest things I've added to the ring. Um, a skinwalker. Which, if you ask any of your native friends, saying someone took down a skinwalker is uh, pretty up there of a, of a quality of taking stuff down. Let's say that. <laughs> but yeah. Small recap in a sense, yeah, that's there's more detail what I can do. If you go back and listen to the other episodes, I explain more of what I can do. Also, uh, as of the last year or so now, um, everything I pulled, I have now pushed the energy into an object, which is a ring. To be specifically, a King Solomon replica ring. Um, it has King Solomon's symbol uh, stamped in it. Now it's made of steel and silver, nothing too fancy that uh, I use to imprison all these dark entities. And that kind of creates a haunted object. But I've actually now thinking about it, which I'm dumb that I never thought about before, need to re-evaluate, 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 uh, what it actually is. Because it's not technically a haunted object. I'll explain more later. But first, what's new? Uh, with my ability. Now, if you listen to previous Shadow Walker episodes, you're up to date with it. Those who have seen, well, if you watch the uh, our YouTube Shadow Walker Paranormal episodes up on YouTube right now, uh, or if you watch the live, you kind of know a little bit into what I can do. But essentially what is new that a lot of people don't know about now is that when I explained in the third installment that the strands that leave my hand... now. When I pull the energy in, and I always thought it was like a force of, you know, energy that essentially pulled the energy in or sucked it into my hand. And now, after having my ability for, well, two and a half years now, um, I can see it more clearly. Is that it's not essentially like pulling energy in. Strands leave my hand. I say strands. Uh, uh, Mike always said he sees them as strings or like a cord that leave my hand and they wrap around said entity. And before I used to, it, I would grab each limb. So five fingers, five limbs, um, you know, of course, around the neck, uh, arms and legs. And I would basically pull that entity in. But after one incident of a dark entity, particularly a demon, uh, grabbing one of the cords because he was able to pull his hand in, I decided not to do that anymore. So what I do now is when I send the cords out, I wrap around entity like a boa constrictor. All the cords wrapping around opposite directions around the entity like a boa constrictor, wrapping them up tight so they can't escape, they can't grab, they can't move. And then I pull the entity into my hand, which at one camera angle, which Megan would share, that which she recorded, uh, <laughs> looks like a black hole almost. Uh, there's footage that Megan recorded one of our times we investigated and she saw my hand, and there's a shadow, a circle shadow in the palm of my hand that's there when I'm pulling, and then when I close my fist and open, it's gone. So, 
there's the theory of Noah. My hand is like a black hole, or I'm making one. I don't know. I just just I'm thinking about that after what I saw. So, but you think about the force it takes to pull in negative energy. A black hole would make sense because nothing can escape from it. Anyway, um, moving on to what I was saying, yeah, the cords now they seem to expand or get bigger with the size of the entity that I'm taking. And I'm talking about size of height and that. I'm talking like the 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 level of it. So a dark entity, an angry person might be cords, but say a demon, it might be like big strands, almost like as thick as a ribbon um, that wrap around the entity, or even like chains or ropes, depending on the size of, or depending on the the uh, the level of the entity. So that's what's new, essentially. Um, I guess what's new also is that uh, the count of what I have in my ring has gotten more. Um, and a small haunted update that we teased at the last episode is that, yes, indeed, I took down a skinwalker um, who was haunting the area of Patsy's Pond. And he didn't show up until after I closed the portal of that was there. And I closed the portal that is there. Now, I previously closed another portal that was there earlier. Closing portals isn't something new. I think I talked about in a few haunted updates or on ep- uh, Shadow Walk episode three. I can't remember. Uh, essentially, my my cords that leave my hand wrap at the edges of a portal and then squeeze close until I can pull the energy in. Then I push the energy into the ring. So, it's a small um, refresher if somebody was like, "What?" Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> But yeah, the Skinwalker, uh, that was a tough one. Not as tough as the demons that I've taken down before, but still pretty tough. So that was a semi-semi-semi-update with that, that I guess we didn't share. But then I explained more coming up here in, in a, well, now. Um, I know I talked about previously about spirit guides and how Megan says she has hers. I have mine. I have particularly three. She has three. And other people that I've met usually have two to three, sometimes even four. Now, I say that sometimes even four because a new spirit guide has come to me. She is native. And I think the way she pronounces her name is, is you have to have the accent, but I do my best. Nahananu is what she's uh, she said her name was. Um, that is my best attempt at getting it right, but that's how she said it to me. Nahananu. She said she was my first ever spirit guide. So, yeah, that was impactful. And now she's in my my mind force that I created where kind of I counsel with my spirit guides. We all sit around a fire, essentially, in a field in the middle of the woods. It's kind of open, and we discuss things. But, yeah, she uh, she showed up, I think, after I took down the skinwalker. Yeah, so... Um, it would only make sense that I have now a native spirit guide who says she was the first after I took down something that strong. So, correlation, coincidence? I think not. Anyway, the reason I we talked about before in uh, other episodes that I don't consider myself psychic is because I'm not. I can't hear them. I can't see them. I can't communicate, I can't remote view, I can't do any of those things. My ability is extric- extremely, so strictly physical in a sense that I, I can only feel things with my hands or if I put my hands to the earth and I can pull from the earth or if I touch someone's hand, it allows me into their mind force to see what's there. Everything is done by physical touch. I always <laughs> accumulate to like, is that Megan is Wi-Fi and I'm uh, hardline. So I have to be you know, physically plugged in and she can just pick up things around her all the time. But we have a better after discussing things, after learning things, after Megan speaking to certain spirits, we actually have a better idea of what I am. What I am, I thought I was going to go into something else, not making you guys go, what, what? Nothing. Don't worry about it. It's a weird conversation by myself. I have no direction. What I am is a war shaman. Now, I know what you think. Shaman, that doesn't make any sense, Isaac. Same thing I said. Shamans, you think shamans, you think you know, spiritual guiders, you know, people who are in tune, people can help people spiritually heal, blah, 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 blah. But in truth, that's a very commercialized version of what shamans are. 
Shamans are far more advanced in the spiritual realms than most people, and they're all across different religions and different regions and different cultures across the entire planet. So, a war shaman is essentially a shaman meant for war, i.e. me. And it was told that certain shamans had staffs, like staff, that they could imprison dark spirits in. Sound familiar? Well, of course. And that's what made me think, okay, this makes sense now. Because this war shamanistic ability that I have to pull energy in into my hands and then transfer it to an object, said the ring, correlates. And also correlates to the other one of my names, which I have five now. Uh, and those five names, of course, uh, is Earthshaker, uh, Odin Strunger, War Shaman now, Ashwakanta, the Reaper of Souls, and Shadow Walker. Earthshaker is essentially a name that was given or correlated from Watanatanka, um, which is Native American religion, that I, I dabbled in when I first started getting into the paranormal stuff like that. I still kind of look into it every now and then, but... Um, not as much as they should. But yeah, Earth Shaker because of Earth Maker, Watanatanka, the great spirit in the sky, the great mystery. Um Odin's Thrunger, because that's what he called me. When I made my first offering to Odin, I heard clearly, as if someone was standing speaking to me, Thrang. Which uh Thranger uh in Nordic uh speech was a compliment that Vikings would give to one another. Um, it means great warrior or badass, essentially. So, Odin calling me Thranger, uh, was probably high compliment. Let's say that. Um, uh, sorry, War Shaman is my new one, obviously, because I am a shaman, War Shaman, because my ability. So, um, a Shadow Walker is the uh, name that was given to me the first time I ever talked to anyone who had any kind of n knowledge of my ability whatsoever. And that's where the Shadow Walker came from, from a woman named Jane, who was uh, a Shadow Walker like herself, but not in the essence of me. Because all EMA users that I've met are psychics, and they have something that they can do to manipulate energy. Like Megan would push energy out of herself, like Mike, who kind of creates an EMP style of energy blast that blasts star things back. A woman we met in Seattle who can push energy out of her left hand to create kind of like a, a force field, or essentially to push dark entities back. And of course, Jane, who we met in, uh, through Australia, I'd uh, meet her. I met her through a podcast and actually go to Australia yet, who pulls light energy in, then transfers it to the other side. Kind of reverse what I do. I pull dark energy in and I imprison it. So she's like my opposite in the sense of our abilities. But she said that when she talked to her shaman, Funny enough, the ability is called a Shadow Walker or a Psycho Pomp, which Psycho Pomp sounds like a hairstyle, and Shadow Walker is essentially what I am. So that's how the name stuck. And then the fifth name, which is the newest one, is Ashwakanta, uh, the Reaper of Souls, because that is what in my, not a coma, <laughs> when I was under in surgery, under anesthesia, I had a conversation with my grandfather of the time when I was a Cheyenne warrior. So a past life memory of my time as a Cheyenne warrior, and speaking to my grandfather from that time, he said to me, you are the Ashwala Kanta, the Reaper of Souls. Now, if anyone is native that's listening, and that name rings a bell, contact me, because I have spoken to natives all around these parts here in North Carolina, and none of them know what the hell I'm talking about. And that tells me that either this name is, and this ability of mine, is singular only to the Cheyenne tribe, or it's such a guarded secret that only the higher up high elders or medicine men know anything about it. But that's my only conclusion when it comes to that. Oh uh, yeah, but yeah, those are my five names. And there's a sixth one kind of be worked on if it makes more sense, but maybe not till later. But um, back to what I was saying uh, about the war shaman, that is essentially what I am now. So yeah, I'm not a psychic, I'm a shaman, which I have to look more into that to figure that stuff out. But when you correlate it to everything I can do, that makes sense, which is mind-boggling for anyone who's listens right to these episodes and listens to our podcast, because you're listening to me and you're getting firsthand knowledge of this. That and it's 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 strange when I think to myself what I can do, and it's like 
I'm not scared of it because it's always felt like it was always there. And I could always, not always do it, but it's like, I knew I was always meant for something big. If this is what it is, then so be it. Because when it comes to uh, taking down evil and conquering it every way I come around, I cannot sit abidely abide, idly abide, and do nothing. Especially when those people out there that can help. And that's why I always, I, 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 I you know, I, no pressure, it was what I'm looking for. I urge people that are dealing with anything dark in their home, too small or too big, does not matter. Contact us because we can help you. There are two episodes on our podcast that you can listen to from two random people who we've helped so far. There's others, others that we've helped um, that have not want to come forward. I had a random friend of ours uh, call me uh, randomly, Instagram video me and telling me, uh, I need your help now. And then now, now I'm like, dude, I'm sitting here watching TV. What's going on? And he's like, uh, we got this guy who's possessed. He was at some kind of conference or something, and he met some people. Um, and he met a guy who seemed fine, but towards coming to the end of the night, started showing signs of possession. And I would say he was borderline possessed, majority oppressed. But he called me. Me and Megan dealt with it. And the guy's fine. I wouldn't say fine. He was, he's not being oppressed by demons anymore, but he's, he's, he's not dealing with that. So... Doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter where it is or when it is, I can pull through phone electronics, which is still something a weird concept for me to understand. But I guarantee the more I learn about science and technology, I may be able to figure that out. By the way, if you want to know the scientifically way I can explain my ability, my body feels uh, EMA, uh, uh, sorry, EMA, EMF. But if EMF is what actual spirits are made of I don't 100% believe that myself energy is just what it is it's probably yet to be measured but so far EMF detectors go off with supernatural stuff going on so we're measuring that so as best as we can so my body is a natural EMF detector that can not only feel but pull EMF energy into itself and the frequency from my voice can command that energy that is pulled into my hand that can hold the EMF energy into an object. So yeah, that's that's about scientifically I can get with explaining my ability with, with the knowledge I know so far. But that leads me to the last thing I particularly want to talk about. I know you're thinking it's this could be a short episode. Shadow Walker Part 4. I wanted to get it out to explain more to you, to share more with you, but um, I think Shadow Walker Part 5 would be longer after I learn more. So I'll probably put Shadow Walker Part 5 off for another year or so, depending on what I learned from then. But I wanted to get this one out because of this specific reason that I should have saw, but I didn't. And I felt stupid for not doing it. When it comes to the ring, my ring that I use to put energy into to create a prison, and said prison I can go into because I can go into it like someone's mind force. What the hell am I talking about? Go back and listen to part three. That explains everything. But I can go into said ring and speak to the entities that are in there. And like I've, I've explained before what's inside the ring. It looks like a uh, forest after a nuclear blast. The entire place is covered in ash and smoke. The trees are burnt black. The sky is ash covered. covered. Um, and all the shadow figures in there have different shapes, sizes, and different looks to them. So any some look like demons. Some more look like regular human entities. But whatever I recently have put into the ring. Like the newest thing. Keeps its shape. Keeps its look. For the time being. Until it gets pushed aside for something new. So when I pull a demon in. It looks like one. Or it has a shape of one. Or it has some kind of design. That tell me that this is a demon versus a dark entity. Or a dark elemental. Which with those, <laughs> the one that I pulled, the last one I can remember, I put in the ring, looked like uh, one of those damn tree things from Lord of the Rings. An int, int, I think they how you say it, int, E-N-T, an int, or E-I-N-T. Basically, you know what I'm talking about. The the giant tree uh, people from Lord of the Rings, uh, the Twin Towers, when you uh, when you see them. Look like that, minus the, the, the beard and the head. 
almost like a singular like wooden head, but it almost its arms look like the wood attached to it were like shields, like Captain America shields in in uh, in Infinity War. How he had them on his arms, so it looked like that, but it was huge, probably like a good like two stories tall. In the mind for in my in the ring, when I looked in there when I spoke to it, and I, funny enough, I took that from here, in this house, that was coming at me. I think it was coming at Megan, but regardless, it's in the ring now. So yeah, um, but no, I had to ex- re-explain the ring better after um, me and Megan read a comment that makes made me reevaluate and explain the ring better. So the ring is not a haunted object. And the reason why it's not a haunted object, because you think of haunted objects that you've known in history, all of them, depending if it's a, a gargoyle statue or a doll or a box or something, even a mirror. Every haunted object that has an entity inside of it, trapped inside or put inside, or the entity put itself in there, can influence people around the object negatively. Right? Every object it can influence people around it negatively. And depending on how strong the entities are inside the object, the more powerful this influence gets. So, it should have been obvious to me immediately that everything I just said, the count, what it was, all those dark entities in this ring. But yeah, so far, to my knowledge, the most haunted object, but it's not a haunted object. Because if it was, everyone in this house would be influenced by this ring to do negative things. You think of all the dark things I put in there, from spirits of dead witches, from a skinwalker to demons to dark elementals, all these things should influence everybody in the house to do negative things. We should be miserable in pain, consistently suffered with nightmares. Everyone should hear things talking from this ring, but nobody does, except for Megan, because you know, she's psychic, so she tunes into it. But my son, her grandmother, her in-laws when they visit, her sisters when they show up, Nobody knows it's there. I take this thing with me everywhere I go. When I do my work, when I go to customers' places, because I have my best control, uh, and stuff like that. No one knows it's there. No one's influenced. No one feels negative around me. So it's not a haunted object. So what is it then? Well, my only conclusion, and this has to go to more than me learning about what Ashokwa Kanta is, and the shaman, war shaman ability, all that, it's a pocket dimension is the best explanation I can give on what it is. I have created a pocket dimension that holds all houses, all these dark entities where they cannot escape from and never leave because there is no escaping somewhere that is nowhere. That sounds like a good name for a song, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but essentially, yeah. Because I can't explain it in any way. A haunted object would be influencing everything around it. But it doesn't. But there's so much in it that it should. But it doesn't. So. Uh, and still the head scratcher is. Is it the ring? The symbol on the ring that's entrapping all these things in it? Or is it me? Could I have used any other ring in history and done the same thing? Could I use any other object and done the same thing? I don't know. Unless I have more information, that's the best answer I can give you. And the last thing I want to uh, <laughs> tell you guys, I think it was Aaron from Starting Feeling Crystals who asked the question, does my ring have a name? And I said, no, because I'd never thought of it. It's just the ring, I always say. And the thing is, if this object, and I thought to myself, what is what is it? What, you know, I thought of like uh, the famous prisons or this and that. No, no. The perfect name for the ring is Cien el Fuego. Cien el Fuego. Which is Latin for no escape. Which is perfect because everything goes in and never leaves. And that might explain that should put some rest into some people's minds because I know some people worried about how could you have that thing around you all the time? How can you carry it on you all the time? Wouldn't that cause you pain? Wouldn't that, like, you know, would you be in a bad mood all the time? No. And that should have been the obvious point of why it's not a haunted object. So, yeah, that's, I wanted to give that, give that uh, explanation better because I know some people are like, damn, is it you carry that around? Yeah, it's, it's not. That's not what you think. So, uh, 
uh, this explanation has just gotten far more weirder for anyone who ever listens to these episodes. But this explanation needed to be said. But yeah, that's all I got Good for you guys to, for now. Uh, look forward to our new episode next week where we talk about uh, shapeshifters. And that's going everywhere from aliens to legends of shapeshifters to even skinwalkers, funny enough. Um, and all the encounter stories people have had with them. And we even talk about, like, you know, like even, like, the conspiracy theories around certain celebrities that are and, you know, lizard people and all that stuff. So look forward look forward to that episode uh, next week. Uh, but as always, guys, you can catch our social medias at Hidden the Shadows uh, Instagram, at Hidden the Shadows Podcast on uh, Instagram, Hidden the Shaw 6 on, on Twitter, Hidden the Podcast 2 on TikTok, or links to all social media and always, always easy to listen to us at Hidden the Shadows Podcast.com. Uh, also, if you're also dealing with anything paranormal that you might need our help with, message us. We are not so unreachable. Or you want links to our paranormal page, Shadow Walker Paranormal, on Instagram, uh, on TikTok, and I believe on YouTube as well. Uh, but yeah, so we'll catch your widows in the next one. Mom.